suggest you take some notes. It's a pretty strong note-taking day. Um, what we're going to be exploring today and Thursday, um, I work with a lot of people who One of the common things that one of the common themes that people frequently come to me about is, you know, I have so many things on my plate, and I don't want to get rid of any of them. But having so many things on my plate is driving me crazy. You know, I work with people who are moms, for example, and they have they work and they've got family things and the kids who they take to soccer and the kids who they take to the piano and the music and the kids who they whose theater things they go to and you know they have church and community responsibilities and they have all of these things that are happening and they can't really take anything off their plate you know the time management thing says well you know if something's if you got too much to take it off but they don't have any anything they can take off. You know, and if you add in the school, which some of you, are, that's some of you, what I just said, and school on top of that. Um, well, what I want to explore and, and play with you, um, play with you guys today and Thursday, um, if you can get this one principle, if you can do more than just conceptualize it, but if you can internalize this so that it's a working principle, what you find is that everything you do becomes enjoyable. Every single thing. And you can pretty much prevent most of the stress you experience just by this one, one single principle. It's one of the most powerful things I've ever come upon, and it works all the time. It works every time it's tried. It is amazing. And we've all, it's not going to be, well, it might seem like, well, that's a new principle, but you've all experienced it before at some point. Um, but to have it explained to you in this way might feel really quite new and, and different. Um, now, what I want to do to start this discussion, so I'm gonna, we're going to start with a few little questions. Okay. This first question, I want you to feel courageous and um, see what answers we come up with for these questions. The first question I want to ask is, what is breathing? Okay. What is real? Or we'll say, what is, what is reality? Okay, you tell me. What's real? I know it's a hard question to think about on a Tuesday morning at 10.30. How would you respond to that question? I'd say things we can sense, like use our senses to encode, like touch, taste, smell, hearing, sight. You said bills? Bills are real? Now I'm not going to put a right or wrong on any of these. I just want us to kind of talk about this, explore it. Um, How emotions? You think? Why do you say that? Yeah. 
because you, you notice them happening kind of thing. Okay? Experiences we have. Maybe we can explore this further by asking the question, what's unreal? What might we put over here? Ghosts? Either side. Let's keep it coming. Think deep. <coughs> what is real? Anything made up of matter? It's made up of matter. not made of matter, so if it's, will you put it over here? Sure. Not made of, what do you mean by matter? Uh, everything's made up of molecules and atoms and matter. Did you ever study quantum physics at all? <laughs> no. Does anyone? It's way too much. Here's what they're saying about, and I'll, this is kind of to play with that idea a little bit. Yeah. If you, we study this a little in the other class, nobody ever listens to this much. It's great. But um, if you took this table, is that real? Mm -hmm. How do you know? Because there's some sense of, okay, it's here, right? Well, if you took a a microscope, just a regular microscope, and looked at this table, what would you see? Okay, you'd see some type of matter. You could say, well, there's something there, right? If you took an electron microscope, or even a strong, if there were such a thing as a stronger microscope than an electron microscope, what would you see? Space. Below atoms. Smaller than atoms, what would you see? Empty spaces the size of which is the equivalent to the sun and our earth in distance. Really? Is it that, can you wrap your brain around that? In other words, at some level of smallness, this is um, what feels like atoms. In other words, orbitals around a central nucleus and the empty space in between. So, is it so much matter? Something tells us it is, but at another level, maybe not so much. We're not going to go anywhere and look at that in here. But, uh, it's interesting to think about. We're so sure of what we think is real when yeah. Okay, but, but is is space matter? Is the space between the Yeah, no, that's true. What? There's something that's There's something you could feel a there's something happening in between there. Let me ask you this. Um, in this true story, um, I had a student once. I've had two or three who could do this, but I had one who told me about it. She came into my office one day, and she sat down, and, and um, she told me what color my aura was that day. You know, she said, you were kind of whitish yellow that I could see. And I've had two or three students who said that. And, and who said that they could see, you know, something that I couldn't see. 
And then she said, and oh, by the way, there's two people here in the room, in, in, your, in your office, that um, one's over here, one's over here. She was facing me. She said, one's, there's a lady over here and a guy over here. And I turned, 